G'day and welcome back to The Collector. And <laughs> me coming down from that moment of panic every time I log back onto the server and wonder if my ship is going to be here. Ooh. Oh. Uh, uh, hmm. I might need to wait till that streaming goes away. Well, that's disconcerting. I appear to be inside a safe zone of some description. Uh, well, I guess I was found and I haven't been destroyed, so that's a good thing. <laughs> it's reassuring. That would explain the interminably long loading thing that I was having to just deal with then. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Splitsy Museum. Behold, a rare specimen of a wild Splitsy captured in the void. Explore the wonders of their ship in this unique exposition for a limited time. <laughs> Free refreshments below. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> nice. I wonder if I can still control my ship. That's impressive. I'm, I'm kind of... I don't think I want to know how they managed to find me, but... It, it's kind of impressive. Oh wait, jeez, I'm over the. I didn't. I didn't even realize where I was. I'm over the Earth-like. Duh. <laughs> wow. Huh. Yep. Definitely not what I was expecting when I came online today. <laughs> this is. This is honestly. Um. The kind of. This is the kind of harmless stuff that I love. Like the the creative ways that people, in space engineers, come up with for doing things like this. I had a reasonable suspicion that because of the way that Space Engineers is, the vast majority of people who were going to come looking for me were going to do cheeky things. And so I wanted to give them the opportunity to do that. And yep. Stalker, you nailed it. Well done. I hope you see this episode. Because, <laughs> uh, nice. Well played. Very well played. Um, there's a part of me kind of doesn't want you to take me back, but I suppose I should continue my journey for legit. How many jump drives is that? One, two, three, four... That's... 48 jump drives. And that's a lot of guns on that ship. With a lot of artillery cannons. There we go. And locked. I will... Alright, here goes. I think this will be the officially the longest jump I've ever done. Not quite. <laughs> 10,000 Ks away. Right. Well, let's I can put down the other jump drive. May as well do something while I'm waiting. Alright, well, that was an unexpected beginning to my, uh, <laughs> to my session today. Uh, not what I was planning for, but it'll be fine. What I think I'm going to work on is getting my jump drives on board. Because Stalker's going to take me back to where I began. Which I think is probably the right call. Make it so I've got to still set things up as I was planning to try and make this work for me. So what I've been thinking about today was sort of the next stage of this thing, which is prepping this ship beyond styling, of course. Styling is still important, but prepping this ship for being the way that I collect people's clones. And I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. One of the ideas I have is to um, basically make a ship that can land down on the planets and then use that ship to collect people, bring them back up here, and then lock the module that, it, that that ship's carrying onto this ship. Uh, or have the module be the ship itself. So what I'm thinking is I have little small grid ships that are planetary capable, so up to 1.2 Gs capable, with hydrogen, a whole bunch of cryopods, batteries, reactors, etc. on board. And those are the things that I fly down to the planet. When I fill them up with engineers, then I come back up here, lock them on, build a new one. And I, I see how many I can get. Because I don't know how many people are going to show up to have their clones stolen. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see. Um... It'll be interesting, but I'm hoping a few people will. 
But that's that's kind of the that's sort of the way that I'm thinking of doing this at the moment, and I feel like it should be something I can work on. Now, in my head, I had a long journey to travel, and so I was going to have plenty of time to build up these things, and so I kind of like the idea that I'm going to get that journey back because I was kind of looking forward to it, using that time to to do a few things around the place. Now, one thing I didn't do in here last time, while I'm waiting for components to be made, I didn't put any lighting in the main cabin. No. Oh no. Oh no, I didn't leave space for lighting. What have I done? <laughs> uh, poo. I really like my slightly lifted ceilings, but it's not going to leave me... Uh, what can I do? Maybe... Uh, I wonder if I put a light on either side of the cockpit here, whether that'll do enough. Still can't believe I had to take this into us an offline world just so I could fix the lighting. I mean, just so I could fix the air tightness. Ah, uh, yeah, it's okay. I'll deal with it. Better than it was. Get ready for my next job. Another 10,000. That's a... That ship must weigh a lot. But though that many jump drives to only get us this sort of distance. What was I doing? I've gotten distracted chatting to people on the server. <laughs> um, right. I need to finish this jump drive, but that's being worked on by the assembler and it's taking forever. This is probably not a good time for me to consider moving out my nacelles, my engine nacelles, which is kind of what I want to do. But the thing I'm struggling with is how am I going to fit these cryopods on board? Because that's the real tricky bit. I don't know. Focus, Splitzy. You're getting distracted. You're not getting anything done. <laughs> All I'm doing is standing around waiting for stuff to be <laughs> produced by the assembler. Which admittedly is kind of possibly going to be a lot of my time at the moment. Now, how much gold do I have? How much has been refined? I'm kind of debating whether there's any value in me making another assembler. Because I could make a second assembler to try and speed up the production. But the reality is, even if I do that, I'm going to end up with the gold production from the refineries being too slow. So there's another part of me that's like, should I build some temporary refineries on the back end here? Slap down, say, four of them, slap down a couple of extra assemblers and just build a whole bunch of stuff, put it back into storage and then demolish them. I wonder if I could do something interesting with a second layer on here. I wonder if a refinery up here could work. Like a second one. Ooh, I could put a couple of big ion thrusters up there too. So that's where the ion thrust could come from and I could then lower the whole hydrogen section down a block. So I was thinking of lowering even the tanks. And I can then... Mm, 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 I like this plan. I like this plan. Alright. Uh, I need to make some steel plate. Or at least grab some. So we start with... I'll try one this way on this side and I'll try one on the other way on the other side and see which way I think I'm happier with. Which positions and uh, can end up looking better. I think the further forward one is going to be better once I take into consideration the ion thruster position as well. And this does mean a lot less time needed to be spent waiting for stuff to refine. I will possibly have to remove these for PCU limits later because I'm down to, like, my ship's almost 8,000 so far. But when I start doing things like replacing these small reactors with large reactors, it'll get better. I really need to not have this all white. I'm feeling very, <laughs> I'm feeling very boring <laughs> just covered in this white paint. Yeah. Got to admit, kind of lucky that the person who Frank moved me to the Earth-like was... <laughs> was actually online when I came on. So I'm not sure what I would have done with the the safe zone if I wasn't. If they weren't. Like, don't... don't know that I would have been able to do anything. Because I wouldn't have been able to grind in the safe zone, so I wouldn't have been able to grind off the block they were locked to. I might have been very stuck. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Fortunate. Very fortunate. Second jump drive's done. I'm very happy about that. Now those refineries should get built fairly quickly, I think. Because that stuff doesn't take long to make. It's just all the jump drive components. It's so slow. 
But two jump drives is probably enough for the moment for me. Uh, I definitely intend to have some more later. But two's a solid start. Okay. Two more fully upgraded refineries. Did I do the dumb thing again? No, I didn't do it. Phew. <laughs> I was worried I'd done them back to front like I did when I built the first two. Uh, sweet. That's four refineries. That's going to speed things up considerably. Oh, getting some uranium refined. That's my cargo going. So we got uranium, silver, and platinum still to be refined. So we've got a thousand tons of ice. We've got a generous amount of pretty much everything except for magnesium, which is a little on the low side, but that was kind of intentional. All right. So with those up there... If I were going to put ion thrusters on here, where would I put them? Which type? I really do like the large warfare ion thrusters. Yeah, a bit more than the sci-fi ones. I do wonder if the shape's going to work with uh, these refineries, though. So what I was thinking of doing was basically putting one straight on the back there. And there. Do they go back far enough, or do they need to go further? Could work. Maybe. Let's see how the armor shaping goes around it when I'm when I get to that point. Yeah, I was thinking of at least having backup ion thrusters in every direction so that I can at least push where I need to if I'm running low on ice. Because I'm gonna be using a lot of ice for um well, powering the human machines. I do not have the materials to make this yet though. So that's a lot of thruster components. How much would it actually cost me? Nine hundred and sixty thruster components. 1,000 thruster components will be 333 gold, 133 platinum. Okay. How much platinum have I actually got? 0.13, 138. Okay. 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 It's not as far away as I feared they might have been, but I am going to leave them as just a shell for now, just to give me an idea of where they're going to go. Uh, as I try and work on the top part of this ship, and then I'll figure out where I need to reposition the nacelles to work with this design. Because I'm, I'm kind of happy with the shape so far. I want to do something with the side because it's really quite boxy along the side here. But I'm not sure what at this stage. Part of me wants to make like a hammerhead of wing wing shape thing up front. But uh, I don't know if that's going to look good. Might give it a... Oh, uh, oh what? Do I want to try it even? Is it going to look so bad that I'm just going to be embarrassed if I do it? I think I might try something a little, little less, a little less prominent. Let's try this. Oh wait, this might be enough. I go to doing this down the side. Does that help? Yeah, I think so. And then when I get near the jump drive, I might just end this part like this, and then figure out what I'm going to do with the armor shape around there. Oh, oh, that's plate to make inside airtight. Uh, oh, I got a better way of doing this. We'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of this light. And then we will go with a passageway light. That still gives me a light in there and gives me the air tightness all without any worries. I really wish we had a passage to light. Why didn't you give us a passage to light? I really want one. It's the neater, like it's the non-industrial passageway. I really want one without a light. I mean, with a light. What am I saying without a light? With a light. Because I think I wanted this to be a passage so that the toilet was a bit more... Um, oh, well, I guess I'm jumping from the toilet. So that the um, the toilet was a bit more hidden. But I guess I could just put one of the regular ones. Or maybe I did it because I wanted... I don't know what I did. I don't know what I was thinking at the time, but I'll just put the passage in. But yeah, I really want a passage to light block in a DLC update. Okay. That'd be lovely. Maybe. And maybe, while you're at it, give the shower block a light. Please. <laughs> uh, jumping from a toilet. All right, what am I going to do around the jump drives? The ship's got to get bulkier at that point. So I'm thinking maybe I have some extra extra weight of armor. And I could use that space for, I don't know what. Maybe an, an, another assembler or maybe some lateral large thrusters. Ion thrusters, that is. How would that look? Lateral large ion thrusters look silly. Less silly than I feared, actually. Yeah. Okay. Might be able to work with this. 
So my thinking at the moment is that if I bulk this out a little bit around the sides here, maybe just to two blocks, it'll give the ship a bit more of a shape that's less just straight up boring cylinder. And also give me an idea of how I'm going to bulk it up at the top here to blend into these thrusters and the refineries. Though there's part of me that's always sad when I cover up more detailed blocks like the refineries and the engines and stuff. Because I quite like the look of them on the outside, but equally I think it would probably not be a bad idea to somewhat cover them up. Ooh! How that would work? If I do a pointless wing shape. <laughs> but like a reverse wing. Uh, I will show you what I mean once I get myself some oxygen and some steel plate. This could look terrible, I have no idea. I am just giving it a crack and seeing what happens. See, I'm half tempted to... <laughs> this is going to look so bad. Uh, but I kind of want to do it anyway. Uh, yeah. So imagine that on the other side. Blend it into the armor. I think it needs to almost point forward. I think it's too small too. Uh, yeah. It's not the right design for those nacelles down the bottom. Come up with something else. I think it could work. But I think I'd need to have designed around that idea of some angular wings and stuff earlier on in the build. As of, like, the stage that I've gotten to, I think I need to kind of work around some of the ideas I've already put down. Sometimes I feel like you just gotta try something to realize that it was a very bad idea. Uh, I don't like it. Duh. Did I drop something? I think I dropped anything. Ow. <laughs> some tools, eh? I probably should have made myself some of those. I do have the materials. Yeah, I'm much happier with that. I wanted this rear section. In fact, I don't even know if I'm happy with these or up here. I wanted the rear section to feel rear heavy. So I could then potentially move the nacelles down and a bit more central. Do, 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 do. This is all heavy. Oh, no wonder this thing weighs so much and the jump drives don't carry far. This thing weighs a lot more than my ship. Oh, and it's also upside down relative to mine. <laughs> Hang on. I'm noticing something here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so these aren't scripts. These are just... Uh, the remnants on the things from having a script in the creative mode build. That's actually a really... I've, oh, I've got to use this as a design element somewhere. Like, think about it. If, if I could figure out a way to have, like, that ring shape behind and then cover up with armor that... Ah. Oh, I want to try and think of a way to make that work. I don't know how, but I want to. Alright, back to the armor. <laughs> After the visitor board. I, I just, I cannot get my head around just how well people did it picking up where I would be based off just the skybox. Like, there were people doing trigonometric calculations to see where I was based off just the skybox location, which is crazy. Though, well, the skybox plus the fact that I had the home marker, those were the two bits of information people needed. I... Thoroughly impressed. A little bit terrified, but thoroughly impressed. There we go, we're about... Oh, not quite halfway. It's not the look I was exactly going for there, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I need to figure out this armor. This armor is driving me a little bit insane. Slightly losing my mind. Jump drive's neatly fitted in there, but not with the design in the armor that I had in mind initially. Assuming I had a design in mind. I'm not even sure that I did. What I try and do in this sort of situation is look from a distance and try and imagine where the different lines of armor should end up so that I can end up with something of an interesting shape. And the trouble I've got here is that everything's just a bit smaller than I want it to be or a bit bigger than I want it to be. For me to have the shape that I was after. Like at the front, I wanted this kind of pointy nose and to have the cockpit glass facing upward like that, I thought would be a nice difference for me. Something that I don't normally do. And then as I move further down, 
I just don't want it to be all one flat plane, which is why I thought adding these refineries would be a good idea. But these jump drives are really throwing me for a spin. Right, let's try something. I think I have an idea that might help me out here. Oops, too far. Ah! <laughs> I should not be using an elite grinder. Oh, I should not be using one. Yeah, this is helping, this is helping. Alright. I was using too many angles, doing things in too many different planes. I needed to pick kind of which were my important features and try and enhance those while doing things to make things look nice. Because this, this transition is... Sm oh, I've got to get rid of this grinder. This is too powerful. Uh, so this transition here... Yeah, there's some smoothness to it. But that's the problem. Like, for me, I never found that the transitions blocks that Keen added were actually on my list of things I wanted. Because I... I just couldn't find situations where using them was the right look for the way that I built. Because I'd for so long built without those things being available. I just kind of was like, eh. They are, I'm definitely glad they're there now. But when they initially came out, I was like, am I even going to use these? Am I, am I too stuck in my ways that I'm not even going to touch these now? Thankfully not. So what I was looking at here was this kind of box shape is actually favorable for me. And I kind of want to work with it. Got to jump in a seat. The more I've built in Space Engineers, the more I've come to the conclusion that a good-looking build is more about where you decide things aren't smooth than about how you manage to get things to look smooth. Let's see if this might work out all right, especially with the different shaping leading up to it. What I was thinking of doing was actually putting something else over these, possibly even passages. Passage 2 or the old school passage? I think the old school passage. So what I was thinking of doing was a one there, one there, and then flipped around there and there. Maybe something in this middle bit, but probably just armor. And then I was going to put glass over the front of it. Just so it's not all plain armor and we get a bit of that sense of depth. And the light of the jump drive kind of comes through a bit. These take 74 interior plate. Holy cow. These passage... I don't remember these being so expensive. That is clearly a sign of just how little I've paid attention to them when I made them. Oh, got all the stuff for another jump rope. Nice. Don't... Don't instantly hate it. <laughs> Which is such a ringing endorsement. Uh... What's clear? No, I want this. I want this tin. Something different. They kind of look like curtains with the glass on there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like someone's got some tied back curtains. Oh. Oh. Alright, I'm going to try this differently. I don't like that at all. It didn't work out like I thought it might. Kind of just looks a bit... They just... They look like curtains. Uh... an alternate block I could use. Might look interesting. Oh! Oh! I do have an idea. I'm not using it the way that I normally would here. Like, obviously, the the simple way to use something like this here is like that. What about like that? Uh, still not happy with it. Still not doing what I want it to do. I just kind of wanted to add some interest and some depth there, but I think the glass might be undoing it. Oops. Well, those are lost to the void. Oh, uh, what if I try these guys? These windows work. Maybe they'd work better. Yeah, they could work better. Actually, yeah, they work a lot better. All right, cool. We got something. That should work. Uh, dump this so I don't throw more components out into space. Oh, yeah, so much better. Oh, that is so much better. Yep. I think the issue was the boundary around the window as well as the reflectivity of the window over the flat surface. This this brings it together much more nicely. Yeah, I'm much happier with that. All right, we'll match that on the other side later. For now, I'm just going to keep working on one side, and then I can duplicate it if I'm happy with it. Because the worst thing <laughs> when you're not working in creative mode and you don't have symmetry is to build up a side, double, double it on the other side, and then find out you hate something and you have to do both again that. Yeah, as you can see, these nacelles are now way too close. 
Yeah, we'll figure out this transition to the top part. I've gotten the jump drive bit done. I'm happy with that. This upper bit. I have an idea, but I'm not sure how to do it with the shapes we have. So the idea I had was to put a slope that way on top with possibly this. Uh, or maybe even this. On top like that. So kind of inverting the angles chosen at, well actually choosing the same angles at the front but just doing it on the top Oop, 10 second warning trying to make that look tacked on top the trouble is because of my obsession with half blocks i have this whole i'm gonna still have a gap sort of thing in here but i wonder if i put the slope armor bases in here whether the jankiness of going up that slope to then go back the other way will be hidden or whether it'll still be really obvious Maybe if I go back another block because obviously if we had the block shapes what I would probably do is continue that 45 straight into this and just have a chunk cut out but given the shape we have this might be my best option I'm gonna have to weld this up to see because I really can't tell how this is at the moment and this is again why I like working in white or gray my initial my undercoat and then adding color later because i really want to make sure that this looks okay as it is huh. okay this might be working let's try just one more little tweak to it so i think the reason this is working where the straight transition didn't is because i've kept kept the clear separation between these two layers and i think that's important i'm not sure whether i want to have it at this row if I want to have it at the next one, but I definitely feel like it's helping. This has taken me a uh, very long time. Oxygen 8. Can I get the things down that I wanted to get down before I have to go and get some more? The game, I always play with my oxygen and power supply. <laughs> Am I far enough away from the med bay that I will die this time? Okay, this is maybe working. Uh, I do think now that I've come up with that new way of transitioning, I can get away with having this a little bit higher though. Let's see how it looks if I do that. Yeah. Okay, this is <laughs> this is finally starting to look like what I wanted it to. I'm not quite sure when this happened, but my ship turned into a speedboat. <laughs> That's all I can see now. I can totally see speedboat. Which, uh, what the heck, let's lean into it. Speed yacht. I'm glad I went with less windows. Because it meant that I could use windows like this purely for decoration. I think that. I think it's those windows there that make me think, feel speed yacht. Like speedboat type thing as much as anything. Like the overall shape obviously sells it and this top part being like the cabin. Even though it's not. Uh, yeah. It's kind of feels that way to me. Now, at some point, I am going to have to consider the fact that I sort of need to make some large reactors on this, and I've sort of just closed off all the space where I was adding things. But I will think about that later. <laughs> That's future Splitsy's problem. It's possible that this whole lower section will be dropped, spread apart, and enlarged, but we'll see. Alright, now that Stalker's dropped me off where I was before I became a museum exhibit, <laughs> which is pretty funny, um, I can think about what I'm going to do with these nacelles. I do like the idea of them, but the trouble is I just didn't give enough room. And I kind of knew this at the time. I, I think I even mentioned something along the lines of I probably needed to leave more space here, but at that stage I didn't really have any means to move the parts while still, well, I didn't really have a, any means to move the parts properly, realistically. But I do now, because I've got this little mining ship, I could just stick a landing gear on it, pull these sections out and move them to where I want them to be. But before I do that, I kind of want to think about whether I want to change up this central fuel section with the assembler and whether I want to make that a bit different so that I could potentially put some shaping underneath here and also thinking about where on earth these cryopod modules are going to end up. So, instead of standing around here 
while I'm thinking of that, I'm going to jump. I'm going to do my first double jump drive jump. Oh, having those three gyros makes it so much easier. My ship's fairly small, but it's also, you know, fairly heavy at two and a half million kilos, which I know is not heavy by a lot of people's standards, but it's heavy by these standards. Uh, it's heavy enough that a single jump drive, that the jump drives are only at 50% effectiveness. Can I select home and jump to it? Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, unfortunately, because home is in the center of a planet, it won't let me jump toward it. So I'm going to blind jump my way there. Blind jump. Full range. Square myself up on home and let's get 2,000 kilometers closer. Three, two, well, 10, 9, 8, 7, etc. etc. And we'll get there. This will take us down to 242,000 kilometers to go. And, as you briefly saw, power's maxed, so I do need to deal with the reactors. Looking at this from the side, I kind of, I do kind of like the shape. And I kind of like that I created this separate segment up top. Because then I can do a similar thing underneath, but the underneath segment is going to have thrusters, it's going to have reactors, it's going to have fuel tanks, and it should be able to look pretty good, even set up being a bit wider than the rest of the ship, I hope. So what I think I'll start with first is just pairing, like mirroring up to the other side, and then start thinking about how I'm going to move this so that I can keep myself mobile and get it to the right position. Because what I'm thinking is pushing it out another block, so putting an extra conveyor in here. And then I'm going to need to build some temporary tanks, some temporary storage elsewhere on this ship. Actually, that's probably what I should do first. Build the temporary tanks and storage and stuff. Because then I can move everything out of these nacelles. And that way they're a lot easier to move around. A lot safer to move around. So I won't lose all my stuff if I accidentally knock one of the large cargo containers or something. Alright. Yeah. Temporary large cargoes to move everything into. Temporary fuel tanks. And some temporary fuel tanks on top. Need to make sure all the O2H2 gens are turned off before I build those, though. Because I don't want them getting full. Actually, I only need two because I've only got two. Uh, what else have I got down here that needs to move? Might need a temporary assembler. As my industry has uh, ended up a lot larger than I would anticipated for this build, I may end up wanting two assemblers. Oh, I doubt it. I kind of... I kind of get by with a single one. It just depends how many jump drives I want to build and how quickly I want to build them. I could do something like what Stalker's ship have and just have some toss away uh, little jump drives just for potentially using until I get to the planets. Because once I get within range, a decent range of the planets, the remaining jumps aren't actually all that bad. Like if I can jump 5 to 10 Ks, that's plenty within that sort of planetary system area, but it's just this very, very long trip to begin with that makes me think I might need more. I'm kind of glad that I realized that this was a better idea than matching the rest of the armor to begin with. I can't believe how quickly I forgot what I'd said before of best to finish a design on one side before co uh, copying it to the other. In, so in an instance like this, at least. Sometimes I can see a good reason for doing otherwise, but in this case... There's now a part of me that's wondering whether I could do this in an interesting way that wasn't symmetrical and still have it look good. I tend to find that non that my asymmetrical builds that look good start out asymmetrically intentionally rather than reaching that point after <laughs> an initial build phase where I was trying to build everything uh, symmetrical. Not sure I can pull it off, but I'm, I'm gonna have a look at that. I think this one's stuck symmetrical. Alright. Temporary tanks, temporary storage, temporary assembler built. And we should be ready for another jump. So let's jump it again. There we go. Another jump, mate. I'll just kind of periodically do them. I'm not gonna try and be super, super optimized with. Oh! Jump drive's ready, let's jump. I'm gonna let myself. 
relax and just take my time. But if I do notice that I've got my jump drives ready, I'll try and make jumps when I can. Because this is going to be a long journey. Uh, what am I doing? I am going to my inventory. And I am moving everything from the other containers into these ones. So what I'm thinking is, at least for this ship, I'm going to make another section that looks a bit like this top section. That creates an armor covering for these tanks. Because I know I said I could expose them and that it was all fine. And I do still believe what I said. And that I could just leave them exposed. However, I think stylistically, I've now drifted so far from the rounded shape of these tanks. <laughs> that covering up, covering them up would be beneficial. Alright, let's check the other tanks. Both empty. Sweet. Alright, so if I want to grind them off, I can now. That's good. Because I kind of do want to grind them off. Or at least I want to grind this one off because I want to move it one block forward. The reason for that is I probably am going to need some extra conveyor tube access to the sides to put the other bits in. And I'm not sure I'll be able to use the one that's off this container. Okay, step one is going to be move these modules somewhere else. <laughs> Where? Probably could branch off from here, I think. Same, same position, but just a block higher. Yeah. So if we go to this T junction here, that's not. Shouldn't be holding anything down. And then we put a conveyor junction in there. Should be able to then build my things off the side. I'm really nervous about this. Doing this in the middle of space with nothing to collide into is definitely going to make it easier. But doing it in space with the um, latency and this is going to be merge blocked just make me a touch nervous. Now do I want the go to shape forward or backwards? Also I probably don't want to place them all down yet. I want to grind this off and grab it. So that means we need a little grabby thing added to the mining ship. Okay we're locked. Let's free this up. And hope that I leave enough space this time. I think that should be about right. Where I want it. And then I can merge block the two together. Okay. Please merge without destroying my miner. Oh no, the ship's drifting away. <laughs> Hang on. That's bad. Uh, tanks, off stockpile. <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. I'm like, I'm not moving. Hello, why are you still moving? The dampeners are off. That's what's going on. Alright, let's try that again. Yay! We're locked. We're good. I'm not going to move the other side yet. I'm going to wait until I've done all the armor design around this. Just in case it ends up needing to be moved again. So, we're going to be lopsided for a bit. So the next thing I need to decide is where I'm going to put the big reactors. Because power on this, trying to use all small reactors, is going to be a bit of a pain. The large reactor does produce so much more. I don't think I'm going to put a large warfare reactor in here. Not just because I just don't think it's the right design. And with an L-shaped conveyoring is... Oh, no, it does have a straight through. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work here. I think I'm going to go with the old school big bulbous thing. But it's 3 by 3 by 3 And for me to place it down here... If I grab a steel plate. That'd be the size of the reactor. Then if we do what I was doing and put the industrial hydrogen tank on the front, it means they're all at the same level. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but it's not what I was intending. I was intending this to be slightly longer in the middle. Alternatively, ooh, we don't have more hydrogen tanks. And instead, there's probably a better use of this space. I slap another jump drive in. Something like that. Could even manage, possibly. So go another jump drive there. And then the thruster. Will that be too long, or is that about the right length that I want? Probably about right, actually. I did want it to be a bit longer on the bottom, like stick out a bit further back. So that'll take me up to what? Currently got two, that'll take me up to six jump drives, which at my current mass, 
would take me 6,000 kilometers per jump. Not great. <laughs> not horrible, but not great. Now I'm wondering whether I could modify the nacelles to fit a jump drive in them as well. <laughs> so I can take it up to eight. Um, no. How am I going to pipe that reactor though? I need to move one of the jump drives. Or move this tank a block forward, move the whole assembler apparatus a block forward, and then I've got a perfect spot to just pipe straight there. Which is more important? Do I need three large cargo containers? Those positions are perfect for a reactor. Not once I've refined all this stuff. Because if we have a look at my cargo containers, this one is almost entirely full of ice. And this one is about just a bit over half full, with an awful lot of it being unrefined ores. I don't need three. I only need two. Yeah, all right. I'm getting rid of the middle one. That was a very circuitous route to a very simple decision. <laughs> but it works. Uh, so I need to anchor this thing down to somewhere else. And anchor this thing down to somewhere else. And grind out this cargo. One large reactor, then build some small reactors if I manage to get more than nine jump drives on this thing. I think I was thinking too big going for the... Um, double large reactor because my goal is to have most of my construction done by the time I arrive back within a reasonable distance of planets it's just thinking how many years has it been since I built one of these I genuinely cannot recall the last time I built a large reactor place them down in creative mode sure but built one in survival it has been an awfully long time. So often I just mindlessly weld stuff by hand when I could do things more efficiently. Uh, but I'm, I use that time in a lot of circumstances just to think. It's my, okay, what am I doing next? How am I going to do it? How is this design going to work? Am I going to make it do the things I want it to do? And we need a whole lot of reaction points. Binaries and silver. Not silver. Silver. Bit, but I do need more. Oh, I've got... Oh. I got heaps of silver. What have I run out of? Oh, right. Where's the iron? Oh. Oh. Energy critical. Well, that was unexpected. I'm out of iron. How did I end up out of iron? All right, asteroid time, I guess. A camera somewhere on this. I should put a camera on this. Then I can do some. Oh wait, uh, spotlight. So I can... I'm so used to having the camera panning mod by Digi that I completely. Oh no, I'm not gonna have enough parts to build this. <laughs> uh, boo. All right, let's just fly over to an asteroid. I'll mine some stone. Pick an asteroid. Any asteroid trying to see if I can spot a little red splodge on one of these asteroids near me, but this sort of range, I just can't. I need something to do the targeting for me. Oh, server restart. Uh, right. <laughs> yes. I should be stopped before that happens. What was I doing? Oh yeah, the welder. Oh yeah, iron. <laughs> taking, taking a couple of minutes. Uh, that's all it needed for me to completely forget what I was up to before the server restart. Ignoring the temporary car cargo containers and hydrogen tanks on top. I kind of see where this is going now. I like it. I have no idea what color profile I'm going to use for it, but I'm sure I'll make up my mind and then change it and then pick something. Ooh, I think there's red on this asteroid. Uh, and then pick something horrible. And then stick with it, saying that I'll get used to it, and maybe I'll like it after I get used to it, and then everyone will be annoyed at me. <laughs> annoyed at me for using it. I think I've accidentally headed to an asteroid with iron. Just redirecting myself a little bit. I can get closer to the deposit. But I can see a little red splodge. 
I just picked this one as the middle of a bunch. And it looks like I picked well. That'd be nice. I'm glad I didn't have to mine stone. Oh, no. <laughs> I just realized something as well. I don't have the paint gun mod. So painting's going to be extra fiddly. And probably require some grinding down of things. And I'm spinning because I lack that thruster in one side. Because I don't need to get too close, I can just let the, uh, let the miner have to travel a little bit further. Not gonna lie, I feel really happy when lucky stuff like this happens to me in an environment where I... <laughs> absolute proof that I didn't just get here by editing. <laughs> oh wait, no I don't. Dang it! Never mind. Ignore that. I could get here through editing, but I can't get here through teleporting myself. I shouldn't need too much iron. As in, like, the amount that I get from a single load here is probably gonna carry me a fair way forward. Unfortunately, though, this deposit is tiny. Which means I'll probably have to go flying around this asteroid to see whether I can find another spot. It's got it. There should be more than one deposit here. Uh, it's fun when you eject this much stone and just go... Oh. Oh. Flick it around. <laughs> yeah, let's see how much is in this deposit. I really hope this isn't just this tiny little bit on the surface. I think it might be. Yep. It is. Well, I've been unsuccessful on my scouting run, so I'm just going to collect a full load of stone. And with my 100,000 kilos of iron. That'll be... I think that'll be adequate for a while. Oh. I think more of my refiner got built now that we've got some iron. Yep. Here we go. Uh, plates are streaming in. Perfect. I said refinery got built. Obviously I meant reactor. Oh, I probably needed to collect that stone. I don't think I had 13 tons of gravel. Cool. All right, that worked out. All's well that ends well. Now... What am I doing after I fix that up? Probably extending this pipe down and having a little L piece in there so that it connects up to the reactor as well. Then figuring out where the jump drives are going to go. Oh! That L piece can be another small reactor. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, let's place that down so that gets built without me having to do it. Alright, that's going to take a while. I am glad to not be monitoring that while it gets built. So I'm having some trouble trying to decide whether the nacelles are now in an okay position or whether I still need to move them out further. And with these jump drives here, I should be able to start doing a bit of a sheath covering it to get a clearer idea of what shape that this under section is going to be. The part that's making me a little torn here is that I want this under section to be a different width than the middle bit. And whether I want it to be half a block narrower, or like a full block narrower, because I'll use half blocks on both sides, or whether I want to do something different and push it out an extra block. I'll try the half block and see where I can go from there, see what see whether it works. What I'm trying to do is use again that little cut-in sort of look, similar to what I did up here, just to separate the two components. So even though the armor is almost continuous, there's a very clear line that breaks it up and stops this from looking like a giant blob. I think I've welled up what I've done so far because it does make it easier to tell whether this design, this sort of design is working, if it's welded up as you go. I've always been a bit bad <laughs> at uh, making sure I weld up as I go, and it has definitely made it more difficult to see what's going on sometimes. Yeah, I think that works better. Bringing the 45 degree angle back that I used at the front here, and repeating it down here, rather than trying what I was going to do of using the 2x1 slopes, using the 45s is so much just, yeah, works much nicer here. Cool. I think I've got the idea. One of the things that I find unfortunate about the nature of doing a series like this is that I have to record quite a fair way in advance. Because obviously there's the risk of 
not having control of the server that something goes wrong and the servers are down so I need to make sure I've got recording saved up in that event I've got to try and keep myself hidden <laughs> so I need to make sure that I'm not revealing my location by just stopping somewhere at the end of an episode and being sat there until next week and so the thing I dislike about that is that I don't get to get feedback from you guys on what I'm doing. I've always really, really enjoyed getting feedback from everyone about what I should be doing and about what I should be doing and, you know, how to make it work better. Because I think it's made my designs over the years genuinely better. And it's taught me a lot about the game compared to what I knew when I first started out making videos. Uh, but it is, it's just a one of those things that I just don't think there's a way around it in this environment. Trying these windows again. They obviously won't really show what they're supposed to until the jump drives are built, but I'll be looking at the nice circular shapes in the jump drives and I think that'll be kind of cool to be able to get a hint of through there, especially if some of the hull lighting brightens up stuff that's behind there. Kind of like how you can see the jump drive charge condition through these windows up here. Yeah, I think I've, I think this is this is the shape I'm gonna like. Not sure how I'm gonna utilize a similar shape on the nacelles for now, but I think I'm kind of happy. What I need to do is just get this reactor finished. Okay, we have thrusters in all directions now. Assuming that they turn on when I power cycle them. Uh. Oh no, there we go. It took a little while for the fuel to get to them. Cool. Thrust in all directions. So I now need to go get myself some more gravel. I need to make another 238,000 kilometers worth of jumps. And while doing that, I need to build myself some sort of collector ship. Which will be something that I drop down to the planets with. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then. Almost timed that right. So close. <laughs> I really wanted that to time just on the jump out. Ugh. I'll get it right eventually. I've got plenty of chances before I get back. <laughs>